the expectations this section is basically based upon the expectations theory so expectation theory says that the interest rate on long term bonds is always equal to the average of the short term bonds that cover the same time period with different maturities in other words we can say that the investor is indifferent between the bonds that mature over different time periods so if the investor has to decide that he has to invest in a short term bond or a long term bond he stays indifferent what he would do is he will simply take into account the average of the short term bonds the return which is going to be earned that can be earned on the short term bonds and that average is then matched by with the yield or the interest rate on the long term bonds so if the if the two things are equal to one another then the investor will take the two things equally so we the we need to make it sure that the average of the short term bonds turns out to be the same as somebody can earn from the long term bond it is necessary because according to the investment analyst or the investment experts or the proponents of the expectation theories theory if the long term bond yield is smaller as compared to the average of the short term bonds then nobody will invest in the long term bonds so in order to make the long term bonds equally desirable what is to be done is that the yield on the long term bond must be equivalent to the average of the short term bonds so that's the basic concept of the uh, the expectation theory which says that you need to make it at par otherwise people will not people will prefer in investing only in those types of securities or bonds which whose yield is higher as compared to others so if you want the other options the same level of desirable for the investor then you need to consider that this aspect that the yield should be at at least the same for the long term bonds why because we have observed that most of the people or the investors are risk averse and they prefer to invest in the short term investments so if they are planning to or intending to invest in the long term bonds then it is important that whatever they can earn on from the long term bonds should be equivalent to the short term bonds so people prefer to they will not hold the long term bonds unless and until the return or the yield on the long term bonds becomes lower than the what they can earn by investing in the short term bonds so basically we what we are trying to say is if this is so the yield it is at par for the long term and the and the short term bonds then the two types of bonds or the bonds with multiple different types of maturities are considered as perfect substitutes of each other and the investors become indifferent to choose the short term or the long term bonds right so that's the basic concept behind that so i'm going to explain the expectations theory with the help of an example so for example if there is a certain short term bond that will mature in a year and the expected yield for that short term investment is for example 6% and if we invest in another short term bond in the next year or the second year then we are expecting that that yield that will be that can that can be earned from investing in the second year for a short term bond for another short term bond or the same short term bond will be 8% in year 2 so if i have to invest in a long term bond the return on the long term bond which is expected to mature in 2 years must be equal to the average of these two short term bonds so how we find out the average we know we will consider the yield from the first year short term bond that is 6% and then in the next year second year we are expecting to earn 8% from 
the by investing in one year term bond so 6 plus 8 plus will give you divided by 2 will give you a 7% average so this average is then compared to the long term bonds here we are assuming that the long term bond will mature in 2 years so if the long term ye bonds yield is 7% only then the investor will consider the long term bond as a viable option and this is how the planners that plan or they decide the yields on the short term bonds and the long term bonds they do consider this particular aspect explained by this theory that they need to be at par and this is the investors consider the two types of instruments that are maturing in just one year or over two years or or like for uh, for example in five years the whatever expected yield yields are there they are they should be equivalent to each other so when we explain this expectation theory in terms of the three facts which we identified earlier and those facts were defined by looking at the historical data explaining the relationship between the yields or the rate of return over different maturity time periods so we have observed that there is fact number 1 which says that whether the bonds are short term or long term they are going to mature in a year or they are going to mature in 20 years the overall yields from the short term bonds and the long term bonds more or less move in the same direction so if the short term yields are moving up the long term yields will also move up and if the short term yields are going down the long term yields also follow the same pattern so there are ups and downs over bonds of different maturities that move in almost the same direction so this has been observed in the historical data and that has been considered as fact number 1 so if we cons- if we take into account the expectation theory we are saying that the investor considers the average of the short term bonds and it matches or compares the yield or the return which it he is going to expect from the long term bonds so if the short term bond yields are going up the long term bonds will also go up because they are to be compared and they are they have to be matched so we say that the expectation theory is in line with fact number 1 then the fact number 2 that was observed from the historical data was that when the short term yields are low people expect that in future the short term yields will rise so there is an upward movement whereas when the short term yields are considerably low they are expected to rise in future they will move in upward direction but if it has been observed in the market according to the historical data that the short term yield or the rate of interest that is earned on the short term investment or uh, instruments or any type of bonds that are going to mature in just one year for example if they are high then we expect that the yields are going to fall in future so there is a downward movement so we say that the yield curve becomes inverted so this is fact number 2 which has been observed in the historical data that shows the relationship between the yield and of different types of bonds that are going to mature in different time periods so when we look at the expectation theory it also confirms fact number 2 but when when we consider the fact the third fact fact number 3 which says that most of the times the yields move in the upward direction so the rate of return the expected rate of return is observed mostly going up so if we look at this particular aspect we are saying that in the case of the short term and the long term bonds the two things are considered to be equal otherwise people will not invest in the long term investment opportunities hence this particular theory fails to explain fact number 